Okay, welcome back everybody from our break. We hope you have your popcorn, your snacks, and whatever else you need to enjoy this upcoming match. Uh, we just saw some players have a really good game. I think it was, what, an hour and 20 minutes is that whole match? The, the whole match, games. I think yes. the first game was about 40 minutes. Yes. Uh, and it was good. But we have two players coming up. We have Matthew and Cameron. We're going to talk a little bit about their decks, and then we're going to get right into the match. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you're just tuning in, this is the Enter the Battlefield uh, Canadian Highlander Store Championship event. Top eight competitors playing, duking it out, trying to be a uh, crowned store champion, but not for standard. No. no, even though that is also happening at the same time in the store here, uh, we're, we're looking at Canadian Highlander. So let's go over to our first deck list. Uh, and we're going to be looking at... Dun, 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 dun. I think we have Matthew's deck here. Pardon me for putting up the wrong name there. So, and then you gotta click the trailer. There we Pardon. go. Okay. Um, so, Matthew is playing uh, Sultai Sol Reclamation, which uh, Wilderness Reclamation is is a spell that's gonna untap his lands on every one of his end steps. That lets him play a bunch of uh, stuff in his own end step at a much higher mana than he would normally be able to. It's down over here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, and it also allows him to have uh, interaction up. Oh, oh Wilderness, wilderness right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying salt <laughs> I mean, for right. the team. Yeah, salt is the mm -hmm. color. Um, uh, but it also lets him have counter spells and things up for his opponent's turn, so it looks like a very interactive deck. But he's also playing Thoracle or Thassa's Oracle combo to potentially be a, uh, a way to win the game, uh, which is maybe the least interactive uh, yes. <laughs> combo possible yeah. with Demonic Consultation. Cam's on the play with a mulligan to four. Cam is on the play wow. with a mulligan to, to four. And, uh, and Matt kept seven. Okay, okay. so so that's going to be... We're, we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. We're, we're going to get to the gameplay. Um, so, yeah, let's actually flip over to Cameron here if we can... Da, 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 da. We did it. Um, oh, we got to click trans. There, we, there go. we go. We did it. Um, and so Cameron is on a scape shift slash time walk deck. So he has things like, uh, you know, things to fetch out lands from his deck. He has scape shift to then valicate his opponent out of the game or make a bunch of feel, uh, field of the dead zombie tokens. And then he has time walks to just take more turns, but not just time walk. He's playing uh, all a whole bunch of time walk variants, uh, temporal manipulation, temporal mastery, uh, even going as far as playing that one that um, uh, savor the moment. And it keeps all your stuff tapped, but you get an extra turn. So very curious how this uh, game will play out. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? <sighs> I would like to see the time walk kind of walk away with the game here. Yeah, it's uh, looking like an interesting deck. Yeah, it's looking like an interesting deck. Anything that takes extra turns is something that is my little flavor of decks uh, to have. But it'll be interesting to see what these two players kind of bring forward and, and how they're going to be playing. We just heard too, right, that I think it was what Cameron is in a mall to four. Uh, and yes. Matthew's keeping a full seven. So Might be a tough game one. Yeah, it might be a tough game one. Uh, I think or Orcish Bowmaster, if Matthew finds it, could be pretty tough for Cameron if he's trying to draw lots of cards as well within it or just take all these extra turns. Uh, dig Through Time is going to be a bit of a one too, but it's actually a uh, look. But, so, I yeah. Don't know what I'm to all right, we are going to head down to the game. And we're going to get started in it. And I'm just messaging our table judge to let the, the players know here that they can get started. There we go. And uh, hopefully you can see here, might ask our table judge to change the uh, the app that they're using to score. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see the life total. So yes, that is uh, a master wizard in this. I've, this is one of these new cards, right? The beginning of your end step, if you've cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among the non-creature spells you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type in your hand, put the rest in the bottom. Hmm. I've wait, never what played is this card. card. <laughs> I've never heard of this card. <laughs> oh wait, no, I've seen the card, but what, what? Oh, I guess for each card type, okay. So if he casts like an instant, then he can get like look for an instant if he casts uh, I guess there's, this is a way to, like, if you play a uh, take a turn spell, which almost mm -hmm. all of them are universally sorceries, and you're digging quite a, yeah, a deep, deep down to find another take a turn spell, like, that could, I guess, be almost like a that Jeskai commander yeah. that just, like, oh. takes a bunch of extra turns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, What's his name? Nahiri. No, not Nahiri. Well, not Winota. Oh, my gosh. 
This is bad. Nichila? No. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm the, trying to the remember. Guy. Oh, perfect. There we go. We got that. Suspending. Narset? Narset. Yes, the thank blue. you. The, there was a list No, no, the, the, the Jeskai Narset. The original Narset, the creature. When it attacks, it looks like four deep, and you cast all the non-creature spells. It's okay. Not I, we're not commander. Well, I'm not a commander player. <laughs> I, I don't play it enough. I yeah, like yeah. it. So Anyway, there's the one uh, Narset that will do that. So looks like we are just suspending, keeping it nice and easy here at the beginning. I guess they're talking about when this is going to happen. So. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, we can see that. Thanks. Oh, the, uh, yes. Yeah, we got the life total app mm -hmm. change to something that's a, a lot clearer for the stream, for the sake of the stream. And it might be just land go for the first little bit here for each of our players. We did get a request from Jaded Trekkie, I guess, if and when we next bring up the... Uh, the lists, if we yep. can maybe sort by card type. Okay, yeah, we can try to do uh, that. We can probably do type. Yeah, we can yeah. do that. Yeah. Might be a bit, we'll, we'll have to scroll up and down within the piece, but yeah, yeah we can do that. You just try type, not type and tags. Uh, it's, we may just do it, but, oh wait, can you actually, instead of view condensed text, do um, visual? Grid, stacks, something? No, no, that's no good. That's no good either. Okay, oh. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure this out, folks. Trying to mm -hmm. figure out how we can better show this, but I think I think for now we might just leave it to what it was before, which was uh, no grouping. Yeah, just yeah, because it, it just fits into one screen. Yeah. Yes, and we will make sure that we're uh, sharing these out after the fact, so no worries there, yeah. folks, in terms of the, the list, so you can see all the the kooky, zany goodness that people have brought to our, our local shop tourney mm -hmm. for today. Yeah, and, and if you're from the area, right, or outside of the area, this is for you too, right? If you're willing to make the drive to Newmarket, right? Davis & Young, uh, we got go buses, go trains that come very close. With This store is always open for you. So. Yep. Enter the battlefield. We're in Newmarket right now for this tournament here. So, we got some good players here today, and we're excited for the games that we have ahead. So, a bit of a slower start here for this one compared to the last time where we had a bunch of artifacts just kind of dumped <laughs> out. It felt like it, and uh, but that's okay. With within these decks, I I kind of expect that. No one's trying to do anything too quickly off the first two turns here. I mean, with Cameron being on a mall to four, four is yeah. gonna be usually a bit of a slower start. Yeah, slower I think. start yeah. for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm not quite sure what we're waiting for at this point. Um, maybe searching, or they're talking about something. I'm just going to message our judge and make he sure He may that be trying to resolve one of his fetches here and looking for something. Yeah, it looks like he's just getting a triome here. Trying to find it. Usually, how it goes is right. You pick up fir the first half of your deck, and you don't find it. And you pick up your second half, and it's the last card that you look for. At least that's what I always find. It's like, but it seems like we found the triome. Might be looking through the rest of his deck just to make sure everything's there. And it looks like this uh, the search for tomorrow, which I believe got put out on turn one. Let's mm -hmm. bring up Cameron's deck. Uh, this is Search for Tomorrow. So he suspended it. It looks like it's on one counter. And yeah. uh, so next turn, I think we'll be seeing that come off suspend. Yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. Should happen now. And this is going to get a basic land untapped. Yeah. Matthew, not going to counter this piece here. Nah. It's not, uh, not he has any permission spells. This is not worth one of them. Yeah, and Matthew, based on the type of deck that he's playing, I assume is running quite a bit of, uh, oh, of yes. permission in the form of both uh, counterspell type cards and also a lot of removal. And actually, I mm -hmm. think in this matchup, like Cameron's not putting out a ton of creatures that he's going to, you know, care. Like, I, I mean, obviously he has some creatures mm -hmm. and he cares about them getting removed, but he's not creature heavy. No. And so a lot of those permission spells that Matthew's running in the Saltai Rec deck are not going to be great against this, like, here's a, a take a turn spell, right? Yeah. Um, so if Matthew draws kind of, quote unquote, the wrong half of his deck, 
You know, if he starts tough. drawing the cutdowns and the damnations, yeah, those are gonna be and tough. it's going to be a, a tough match for him. But but then if he draws the right half of his deck with all the counter it's spells, it's uh, probably going to win him the game. Yeah. And that's, that's the kind of the joy and the variance of these singleton hundred card formats, yep. right? You know, you're gonna you're gonna have some good draws, good matchups, right? And you know, you can't. You're either gonna have a narrow deck that does one thing. You're gonna if you spread the field too much, you're not gonna do a whole lot of anything, yeah. right? And it may work sometimes and feels good, but other times it may not. Yeah, and, and oh, looks like we need uh, uh, shuffle mishap. That's all right. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, some of that is just the nature of the format and also what these players were maybe expecting coming into this top eight tournament, right? Like if Matthew was expecting that there's going to be a lot of decks where, you know, or maybe not a lot of um, uh, like fast combo decks, mm -hmm. right? Again, fast combo decks, all these removal spells are going to be really bad against those. Yes. Uh, so maybe he expected more of like a mid-range or aggro meta. And mm -hmm. so he's bringing these uh, combination of removal spells and, and counter spells to... Uh, yeah to take care of things here. And well, especially with up. kind of what decks have made it through to the next round here, nothing feels too fast for the decks. You know, the one deck that Rick was playing, that didn't make it to the next round. I think that was our fastest deck, as yep. I said fast about 40 times earlier when we were first talking <laughs> fast, about it. Fast, 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 fast. Uh, Now these decks, more mid-range, they're more fair, right? They're drawing, they're curving out. And they're just trying to get ahead of you on card advantage, right? Also, they are going to try to kill you either with turns, taking a lot, a lot of turns, or maybe eventually they might cast their Sylvanas Reclamation too. Wilderness Reclamation. Yeah, it did look like, uh, even though Cameron was on a multi-four and ramped by one, it looked like Matthew had maybe missed a land drop and now mm -hmm. has, has found something. And we're fetching, so I assume... We're going to be some, uh, seeing something come out of the, the deck here. I mean, there is a possibility when Matthew gets to three mana that he just jams uh, Fast's Oracle and Demonic Consultation, but it would be very, I think, risky because Cameron himself, I think, is running some counter magic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so a question from one of the folks in the... Uh, in the chat, Spazzy Whack Job. I'm not making that name up. Um, <laughs> That's good. I'm not, I'm not calling the, it names. I love the name. Or I them names. The name. That's a good name. Um, so question for the judges. Do goal borders count towards your proxy count or or what? Um, so here at the at the store, we do count those as a proxy, and we do have uh, a proxy allowance for all of our players in our Kalander tournaments just to make the, the format a bit more accessible. We want people to, to get invested, but we also don't want them to feel like, hey, I just can't play this format. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks that have been around for a little while or maybe have like uh, some commander decks in cards uh, or like modern stuff yeah. like they, they often are able to put together a very good deck with uh, with some handful of proxies but for us yeah gold borders do count towards that uh, that proxy I, I think other places that don't allow quote unquote proxies would count gold borders and like international collector's edition yes. as not a proxy, but mm -hmm. technically they're not a tournament legal, legal card. card yeah. So, and I think that's where we d define the line for entry yeah. battlefield. So yeah, so ten proxies is correct. So I, I feel like with ten proxies, right? And I think there's been other discussions. Is you can relatively build almost any deck, right? So uh, for the most part, right? Yeah. You know, there's a definitely exceptions if like you're trying to run a five color deck, yep. right? You know, yep. and you don't fetches have fetches and, shocks and the and shocks and all that. So. Uh, you know, there is definitely that financial constraint piece. So 10, 10 right now is what we allow. But often when you're running like the five color or four color good stuff decks, the, the money is tied up in like the dual lands, right? Yes. And so like when you have 10 proxies and you can proxy, you know, five dual lands and then you still have four to proxy like the four most other expensive cards in the yeah. deck, then you're okay. But, you know, if you're maybe a, a two color deck and you're like, oh, I have this like um, Mox or I have this like... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else would be a lot of money, like a mana crypt or something like yes, that. Yeah. Then you can, you know, you don't need to maybe spend as many proxies on those duels that are, are quite expensive for folks to. It could just be the one get. ring right now. That thing's, you know, around $100, I think, or even 90 yeah. still. It's still uh, up there in price. Yep. So, yeah, duels, uh, not all the duels are proxies. I know that Sia in the last one. Uh, if anyone's running Tabernacle, I think I've seen one that someone has ran in here that's maybe real, but yep. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, Ancestral Recall was played uh, last game, and that one that was, was a proxy. proxy. <laughs> yeah. And a Time Vault was also played, yep. too. So, yep. uh, but I, I don't know, uh, Cameron or Matthew, 
very well myself, but mm -hmm. I mean, they might be running some of these uh, very expensive cards and owning the, the real copies of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Underground Sea it, with the white border, right? Looks, it looks, looks, looks real, real to me, but... You know, but it's still it's magic. It doesn't matter if it's real or not. Yes. We're still playing we're magic here, here, right? We're playing the game that we love, yeah. Canlander, right? Uh, and a store as well. So, yeah. you know, we're happy to be here. We're happy to commentate. And our players are all happy to be playing, too. So, last turn, when we saw that fetch happen by, by Matthew, you cast the Ponder, but then no follow-ups. And again, both of these uh, decks kind of have this... I think just kind of let's sit around, play a bit of a more mm -hmm. controlling game, um, and then kind of set up like our big thing, right? In the case of Matthew, it's like finding the Wilderness Reclamation perhaps and playing that. Uh, in the case of Cameron, it's going to be uh, doing something like Escape Shift or chaining these um, turn spells together. So I imagine we're, you know, again, just the way that the cards line up, we might see just nothing, 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 and then, and then and a flurry a of, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what. Uh it seems like it's leaning out to be, right? It's play a land if you got one, and pass the turn right now. Do a bit of hand uh, manipulation, yep. pass the turn. So really, most players have just hurt themselves here through fetch lands, and that's about it. You know, Cameron here, going for another land, it looks like it. And then if he plays something, uh, kudos to him. But will it stick with Matthew's uh, permission if he has it in here? Yeah. So, and, and with these two decks being that they are this kind of like slower, you know, both of them run some amount of counter magic. Um, you know, there is a real risk if you try to make that first move and mm -hmm. play your card that's going to be like the thing to really set you up for the rest of the game. But then you're tapping low, your opponent gets to counterspell your thing, untap, and then play their own thing. Like, you're in a you're big, behind. big, yeah, in big trouble. So in these types of matches where it's like kind of control deck versus control deck, it's just like try to make as many land drops as you can. Land drop, land drop, land drop. Um, you know, maybe you spend one mana or so not really bringing down the defenses to like draw some cards or filter things in your deck uh, because you, you can't afford to get your important thing countered and then they have the kind of free wheel ability yeah, to you're do tapped their own. out and then you can't react or, yeah. or have anything for their spells so exactly uh, any uh, you know we, we have another question here any fun spice in the first round of play our I first would say so. I would say so <laughs> there's some good you know Sean is tied by yeah, heard yeah. around the world <laughs> yeah, yeah a tied binder coveted to stifle a retrofitter foundry into realizing They're, that player played their own dress down dress down that was Unfortunate. <laughs> and we had a little chat with that player afterwards, and they realized too, and yeah. they were hoping they're pro level it. play. Yeah, pro level play. Pro level play uh, that they had into the final game of a Wargate suicide into a fetch yeah. Land. That was that was maybe the spiciest. Yeah, play. yeah, that was good. There was that there was, was a spiciest. seven. What right, it became what almost like a th eleven eleven Merktide region by the end. I think it was. Uh, I think it was bigger. I think it was 15, 15. It I was, think there was 12 it was counters big. on it. Yeah. It was big. Yeah, yeah was, because he exiled all the yep. cards, right? He exiled like seven on yep. top of the, the six counters he had. So so we do see Matthew double fetching, um, which, I, I, I mean, I think this is just a bit of a shortcut, right? Mm -hmm. Like, quote-unquote, optimal play. You should be fetching once, Wait. getting the card out, and then fetching the next one. Because if Cameron, not that he has this kind of card in his deck, but oh, if he had something like uh, Opposition Agent, like <laughs> double fetch, like yeah, cracking fetch. both of them response in response to, to each other, effect. yeah, and then you just get totally bamboozled. Yeah. Uh, I, you, you know, I know I've had that in, a in, in a CDH happen one time when I was playing, and I'm like, fetch, fetch as well, and then... There's been an opposition agent, uh, and, and then you're like, "Well, I meant to," and it's like, yeah. "But you didn't." Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. right? and it's like, it's like, "Well, I we're playing to win here. I will hand you my deck, and you can take two lands, and I will be stuck with one land here." Yeah. So you know, it happens, right? You know, and and I think in the spirit of where we're at today and how these players are playing, no one. But they may, they may, right? They may try to spike it that hard, but that, I don't see this happening. That actually brings seen. brings something else to uh, to mind is that. I don't think there was any opposition agents registered for this this tournament. I didn't see any when I was looking through the list earlier today. The like the only it, the only players that could have been playing it were Rick, uh, who's now knocked out. He Matthew. was not running it because he's a storm deck. Um, Matthew does not have one. And he, Matthew's the only one running a bow masters. Yeah, and Dave, uh, who is running black in his four color lands deck, also did not include opposition agent. So. Um, oh, and I guess Eric has black in his deck. Really splash. Nothing. Yeah, so I, that's surprising to me because mm -hmm. Opposition Agent just, like, how many times have we seen 
fetching happen uh, oh. and searching happen. Like it's just such a crazy card. Yeah, Zaw for no agent cards award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's not some like you know uh, gentle person's agreement yeah, to yeah, not no, play the card. Word, yeah, 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 unspoken rule. Like we do not play opposition agent. Yeah. Um, no, there, there's it's, nothing of the type here. What is this card that is currently being? I think it's Shark Typhoon. Cycling Shark Typhoon for two. Is that? It is looks it? like. Kind of looks like. It doesn't shark. look like Shark Typhoon. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, it is Shark Typhoon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Shark yeah. Typhoon. yeah. yeah. Um, so Mystical yeah. Mystical Tutor in response. Okay. Okay. So again, this is. I would assume this is happening at the end of Cameron's turn, right? Uh, that's a pretty common play pattern for cycling Shark Typhoon, getting your XX uh, Shark into play, which in this case looks like it's going to be a 2-2. Two -two. And, mm -hmm. like, again, nothing's happening, but this is the type of play where you can kind of do this and on your turn have your untapped mana and keep yeah. going. And the cycling, very hard to interact with oh, by itself, right? The like ability of Basically, it. no way unless you stifle it. Yeah. Uh, so you're getting a card, you're getting, a, in this case, a, a, a decent body, which is going to chunk him over time. Ooh, puts time walk that's on a, top. That's a pretty good card to put on top, right? So, I like, I like. Uh, it looks like... Yeah, and again, this is the kind of thing, because he knew that Matthew was uh, tapped low, Cameron says, yeah, I'm going to play this Mystical Tutor now and put arguably one of the best cards in my deck on top of my library. Uh, but namesake other. on his turn, is he going to just untap and on four or five mana play this time walk into a bunch of open mana? Like, it, that seems risky to me. Yeah, and especially, too, of what's the follow-up? Right. Are you just cycling, really, yes. to take another yeah, turn explore. and another land drop, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's... What's kind of the next step, right, for Cameron if he decides to cast this time walk into five potential open mana? Yeah. So the the big thing I think that Matthew's gaining out of this Shark Typhoon is now he has a pressure on the board. Yes. Right? It's tied in life totals, but he has a threat, and that will need to be dealt with after seven turns, hopefully, or Cameron is going to get something out and deal with it. Yeah. So we'll see what Cameron does here. If he casts it, I don't think he'll just jam Time Walk into five open mana, but who knows? I mean, Cameron does have things in his deck like Force of Will, which means that he can like play this Time Walk and have backup in place. But like like you mentioned again, you do a Time Walk, even if you counter, spend mana, whatever, it's like, what are you doing on the next turn? There's, yeah. there's not a whole lot maybe going on. Mm -hmm. um, ah. He yeah. has a planeswalker out beforehand. That's that where, that's where a, time that walk is, gets big, yes. right? That's where that's where it feels the strongest. I always find, right? Yeah. So the other thing that he could be thinking of, like Cameron does have a lot of these regrowth type effects. That's kind of part of the game plan for his deck. So he has literal regrowth to buy back a, any Ooh. spell. It could be time walk, um, and he has things like I would eternal imagine witness eternal as witness. Well. Yeah, eternal witness. I would assume maybe even timeless witness. No, no timeless no witness. Timeless. So we're not going that far down the rabbit hole. He does um, have eternal Kefnet as well, which ooh. is a fun little spice if he's able to. This get is like when it's on the top of your on deck. On the top, yeah. take a turn, take another turn. Of course, this is kind of where the namesake of the turns comes in, right? Yep, so yep. you have one of these uh, cards on top, and you're going to take a couple extra. If if I were to call any series of plays that I want to see happen in this match, it would yeah. be play God Eternal Kefnet. And then with the, um, you know, before you draw that first card for the turn, he does the Mystical Tutor and he puts has. the Time Walk on top and then gets double extra turns. Yeah. That, that I, I want, called shot. I want to see that happen. Or Kefnet, then we put it back on top somehow after we've already cast it. Yeah. And we can Endurance it. Not Endurance, sorry. We can, uh, uh, oh, what's this land called? Why am I forgetting right now? Which one, sorry? I'm forgetting our land name. Mystical which, Sanctuary which at a right Mystical on top. Sanctuary. Oh, is so, he? That'd be good. Yeah, I he's running it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So. Yeah, Mystical Sanctuary, very, very good when you can put Time Walks on top of your deck and just draw it again yeah. after you've gotten your next exiled. turn. Yeah, it's not exiled. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Cameron is playing any ways to, like, cycle the Mystic Sanctuary. That's something that you do see in, like, the combo-y yes. Mystic Sanctuary loops Ooh. where it's, like, Snapcaster you bring me. it back to your hand or replay it. Um, Countered. Arcage's yeah. Charm. So Arcage's Charm. Th this is, you know, both players definitely have some cards in hand. Asked if you could play Snapcaster, probably to try to get the Mystical Tutor, yep. right? Put yep. something else on top here. And again, end of turn kind of threat, right? Putting yep. a threat back on Matthew to do something, uh, but Matthew just says nope. says no uh, with Archmage's turn, which 
you know, uh, does does tap him pretty low. Like, we're mm -hmm. down to two mana. So this is maybe an opportunity for Cameron to play something and Time have counter lock. magic up and, uh, and, you know, basically put it to Matthew to have not only one interactive spell, but two. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Matthew has about four to five cards here in his hand. He's got some blue cards in there, so we're not sure what those blue ones will do. Maybe they're another counter spell. Cameron's, I think, really thinking about this. Tapping two, is it going to be your time walk? Does play time walk. Just puts it right in his graveyard. Ooh. Okay. Logic knock. Okay. Don't mind and this, if I And this is kind of where it gets back to the idea of you got to go deeper into the counter spells because it's that singleton format yep. in Can Canlander. This is not, it was at a time, right, a top tier counter spell, but. Modern? I mean, this, I, was, this was this counter was, spell in modern. Yeah, but not as much anymore, of yeah. course, right? So we, we have uh, Force of Negation now, right, which is a top one. I mean, you don't, you barely see actual counter spell played and yeah, it's now exactly. legal in modern, yeah. which is kind of crazy, right? Oh, okay. This is a big deal. So we Ooh. saw him play the time walk uh, and baited this is out the counter nice. spell. And now we're playing Scape Shift with yeah. what looks like six lands on the board, which that's enough to no. I was it seven lands? I think it was. I thought it was six, but I, I think we're going to find out very. Ten seconds? Yeah, yeah, we're going to find out very <laughs> quickly replay? here. Um, so, so for folks that are wondering, because Scape Shift is like one of the key cards in Cameron's deck, I'm going to pull it up here. Um, Scape Shift lets him sack any number of lands, which only happens after the spell actually resolves. So there's no like wonky, oh, I sack all my lands and then they counter spell and then I'm just ah. out with like no lands. Um, so you sacrifice any number of lands. Typically, when he's ready to play this, he's sacking them all. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the, the, one the quote unquote combo is that he's probably going to be getting uh, Valakit the Molten Pinnacle. Yep. And he has, is playing enough of these mountains in his deck to trigger this uh, second clause of Valakut all at the same time. They all mm -hmm. see each other entering play, and because of that, you just get to point uh, six lightning bolts at anywhere you want, but typically it's going to your opponent's face and killing them. Yeah. Um, I guess the thing is, did Cameron... I don't know what his mountain count is, right, in here. He doesn't right. need... I think he definitely has enough here, right? So there's four, right? Yep. All in the place. So I'm assuming so that he had enough lands to do this, five. and then they're like Matthew is just asking him, like, can you please go through and pick out the however many mountains you exactly. need, the requisite yeah. number to kill me? But I want to make sure that you show it to me and not I just concede, and then yeah. you didn't actually have enough mountains left in your yeah. deck. So, and that, that's always the number too, right? Because you, you could have lots of basic mountains, but at the same time playing this rug color. Yeah, and it yeah. looks like Matthew's going to scoop it up. Here. Yep, and so. He's dead. And I think uh, Rob, our table judge, is maybe just pulling the Valakut just to make sure that the trigger works the way that um, Cameron is, is claiming. I think uh, it's it's a weird interaction because it is Valakut is saying all of these mountains need to enter and you have at least five other mountains. Um, and so in this case, with Scape Shift, they're all seeing each other enter play. Mm -hmm. But he does need to have six mountains plus the Valakut because mm -hmm. it does say five other, other mountains. So each one needs to see five other mountains. So I think, I'm or wondering five. if he actually that's, that's scape shifted with only six lands and... I don't think he has it. No. Because uh, the other thing too is, I was doing a count when I was looking at some of these and there didn't seem to be too many mountains. Did he did he scape shift with only six mount uh, six lands? Yeah. Yeah, he it's doesn't do anything. Other, though, yeah. Right? yeah. So it's only going to be 12 damage, right? No, yeah. they don't, they don't do any, they won't, there's not enough mountains for it to trigger. Valkit will not trigger at all. Yeah. No, because it's five other plus one, but there's no plus one, so. That's so each, with you. so there's yeah. five mounds that come into play, and then each yeah. one is only seeing four others. So we'll see it seven. It does, well, because it's not an other mountain. That's yeah. why I'm making sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's why I thought. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, you yeah, need to have seven lands out when you scape shift, unless you have something like the Druid, uh, yes. that makes all your lands yeah. all, all yeah. land which types, is, or Prismatic Omen, Omen which. But yeah, yeah the, 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 the Dryad, right? The three mana Dryad yes. that makes everything mountains would work in, yes. this, in this instance because yes. then Valakit is a, is is a mountain, a mountain. With it, within six. I thought seven was the magic number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And that's what people are so saying in chat too, but. Damage, right? at seven. Sorry? But that's for 18 damage. That would be 18 seven. damage if you have the Valakit and six, six mountains. Six. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But yeah. there's no. It so doesn't, yeah, this, uh, Cameron game. might have actually just thrown the game. Thrown the game but maybe. we'll see what, what kind of happens here. Uh, it, it, 
I, I, I'm trying to see a little mountain count here, just looking at the list, because I was trying to do one of these I, I don't know if it's actually a matter or a problem of like him not having enough mountains in his deck. It's He didn't, didn't have, have the requisite lands. number of lands yeah. to scape shift for yeah. the kill, which is unfortunate. I mean, it's, it's not... Uh, a situation he cannot come back from. No, like yeah, any yeah. further mountains he gets will be three damage that you can Two. point wherever he wants. Mm -hmm. But uh, that may be a pretty critical error on Cameron's part because uh, normally you're doing that like when the game is won. over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not you're you're not throwing this spell out just to get some lands. Yeah, like swap some lands in play with yeah. ones in your deck. Yeah, yeah. And that's you know the. The namesake of Scape Shift is when you play it in Modern, right? Or when it was played in Modern, Amulet Titan is just a lot stronger than Scape Shift now. Yep. Um, to kill when you play it. Yeah. So I think they're having a bit of a discussion about it right now at the table here. So it's five, right? Control at least five other, other. mountains. Yep. That's the thing. So he has five mountains. Five mountains only. So each one only sees four other mountains entering mm -hmm. play at the same time. So Valakit will trigger... Zero times. Yeah. Um, One more mountain, then everything will happen, and they will all see each other. So looks, if if he had, yes, yeah, seven lands, yeah, yes, yeah. So it looks like they're. I think Rob, our, our mm. event and table judge, is just uh, walking them through, making sure that they all understand what's going on. Um, so that is unfortunate. And again, I will say, again, because we talked about this with Sia and, yep. and the error he made playing under like. Camera on camera is a whole in different a big ball tournament, game. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's hard. I uh, I think you know for these players, right? They've you know been playing for you know almost two hours in total time potentially, right? Not this game itself, but in total the tournament, right? We've been running for. Yep. And fatigue is a big thing, and that uh, you know is something that players always have to account for when they're when they're in these tournaments. Yeah. And uh, again, kind of speaking to this when when Eric was on playing uh, his uh, Time Vault deck. I don't know how used to this deck Cameron is. Like, maybe mm -hmm. he... Has Cameron played this before? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll we check actually, our piece here. You can actually see. So that might, again, be a factor. Maybe he's... Uh, it might be that he's not... So we have here, he here. played Seeker Turns, and then Blue White Control, Blue White Control in regards... To some higher finishes. Yeah, to some yeah. higher finishes. So not exactly sure of the other decks yeah. that he was playing beforehand. Um, but those are... Our, I wouldn't say Blue White Control has Velikid in it, but this Not is usually. why I would never play. At, you know, Amulet Titan in Modern is a very complicated yes. combo deck. Oh, you it's, cannot be playing that the first time on the tournament no, day of no. the tournament. And yeah. and it's Velikid. You know, you have your lands, you sack them, you play them all right, the seven, and then hypothetically speaking, because a single for singleton, you can't have two Velikids, of course, right? Unless yeah. Yeah, I guess you have a Vesuva or something else. Okay, they're scooping it. Huh? I assume we're going to get an update from Rob here in a moment yeah. in terms of uh, who that was in favor for, and we'll update the uh, the stream in a second. I, I would guess I Cameron conceded. So that is correct. It needs to be six in order for it to trigger. Let me just double check. So yep. he's conceding the game. And we're going to game. And we're going okay. To game so two. yeah. So okay. Cameron's conceded a game. It looks like it for this piece. So we'll uh, we'll update this piece. We'll change over to for the moment and then we'll go from there so unfortunate in that play there uh for cameron it it happens we've all been there we've played you know our uh our tie binders before uh thinking that it will come in and stifle an ability and <laughs> it doesn't Just rip it into seals. um but you know we persevere through i bet cameron will come back in game two here um, he will learn from that mistake, and honestly, he'll probably never forget that as well. Yeah, he's uh, never going to yeah. make that and, mistake. And, and I think that's what again. makes magic good sometimes. And, and when I was learning it, I would say, tell me what I've kind of done wrong, but also at the same time, don't just tell me all the kind of things, right? Like, yeah. tell me how I could have played this to the winning way. If we want to actually see uh, these cards, I actually made a whole new scene, card preview. Card preview, preview gameplay. Yeah, play. so you click that, and then hopefully it should. Yeah, and all right. And then we can click so on those things. So what I actually want to do, I, I don't, I don't want to talk about any cards that are yet to come out. Okay. Because there's still lots of, uh, you know, lots of things to be shown, lots of previews, uh, spoilers, and so on. I'm actually curious about your thoughts of some of the the cool cards of the recent sets. Like okay. what? And, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, this is the most competitive thing. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of curious on your thoughts of, uh, you know, what interests you? Because I have some thoughts. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to look at, you know, this is the most recent set that's come out: Murders at Karlov Manor. I'm not a fan of like how they just took Ravnica and just like put a bunch of hats on everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I don't here know you how go. I feel Here's about your that. Hat. Here's your hat. Everyone gets a hat. It's, uh, it's Oprah all over again. <laughs> you get a hat, and you get a hat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all of it, all of it. But uh, one of the cards I... Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I want to jump in. I yes. have to say, I love these lands. Yes. We talked about, about them earlier, right? The Surveil lands. Yep. Also, Leyline of the Guild Pack. I think that's great. Uh, I think it's super fun. Any type of a... Ley lines are, are always good ones. Yeah, Any I'm a, ones are specific here. I'm a fan of this card, uh, Arch Druid's Charm. So I've been playing uh, after the MagicCon Chicago with Pioneer yep. and the uh, Lotus Field decks, which have been around for a while, but they're now playing this Arch Druid's Charm. And I went to Magic Arena, and I was like, "We have Explorer. I want to see what I can do to yeah. like make a similar deck." It's not easy because there is no uh, hidden strings. Yeah. So you're like you're playing really dorky creatures that like untap lands instead. Yeah. Uh, but Archdruid's Charm is in that deck. It is really really good. Really. Yeah. Well, like for three mana, you're searching for a land and putting it into play, and it's any land. Any land. Any land. So there's not a restriction, and then if you get a creature, you put it into your hand. So it's it's That's an interesting good. card. It has it has application. Otherwise, it is hard to cast like three yeah. green mana, triple green, not easy. But I could see this uh, being a bit spicy depending on the deck. Like if yeah. you're looking for a very specific kind of land in a landsy focused deck, and like this can put in uh, you know your strip mine or wasteland or whatever uh -huh. to play and directly. I, I actually really at like instant the, speed. Yeah, instant speed. I really like the third part of it too. Yeah. Exile. Yes, exile artifact. and artifact or enchantment. What's one that we've talked about a lot on the stream, Adam? That's too good. Uh, uh, Sometimes uh, what the is one it? ring. Yeah, the yeah, one ring. The one and ring. I think that's a, that's a huge clause, right? I haven't seen the, I have seen this card once before, but that that. Ex Exile piece is huge, especially for green to have an exile compared to destroy within is, is very nice. The other card that Ooh. I've been really interested in, and there's like yes. a series of cards across like recent sets. So David uh, Vance, who did make it into our uh, semifinals, we'll and we're going to be showing him next. Him next. Um, he is a big proponent of a um, Phyrexian Dreadnought deck. Oh. So it's it's playing all these like siphon your own kind of thing effects or mm -hmm. um, and I've been pushing him like man make it five color make it five color because you can play stuff like <laughs> strict proctor oh. um, that like counters your own enter the battlefield triggers yeah. and then you can like go really weird and start playing like your own lotus fields and stuff like that if oh, you want. That's good. Um, but then stuff like cryptic coat and actually from the same set there's the white uh, gargoyle that also counters uh, creatures' abilities when they yes. come into play. There's so there's like all these cards that are like doing stuff in that kind of area and I feel like that's like a, a bit of an unexplored uh, yeah. space, yeah. Oh. I'm curious if we can find it here without... Oh, this one. Doorkeeper Thrall. So stuff like this. Oh. Um, These hate bears. You know, it's like a hate bear, but then you can also play, like, find this Phyrexian Dreadnought with Enlightened Tutor mm -hmm. and, like, Creature Tutors and, like... Uh, oh, I don't know. I think there's something there. I think there's something there. And Flash. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What that's, about you? Any, that's anything that's uh, well, the no, no more, more lies. lies? I think, and, and there, I think we have two people playing that today as well. Yep. No more lies. So I know that's going in my Bant deck right now. Uh, my Bant Blink deck for Canlander, just for looking for that other type of uh, interaction and permission spells. But yep. uh, I really like the coding that we were just looking at, right? And it's, I, I find with these new sets, right? There's so many cards. Right, mm. and to try to look beyond just of the sets that they're coming in or the formats of the Canlander applications of it, right? So thinking yeah. about the, the yeah. Stifle Dreadnought, it's what else can I build yeah. into my already existing, or what can I build it into, which yeah. makes it really fun. And I'm not saying any of these cards are top tier optimal yeah. cards, but like they look a lot of fun, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Reenact the Crime is another one. Like you exile any card that entered a graveyard from anywhere. And you get to copy it and you cast a copy. Like, it's kind of a weird that reanimate. Like, maybe there's Triple something blue. with a gifts and given pile that you like yeah. put this in another card and you're like, the thing that you get to mill, like, if they give you this, you're getting uh -huh. it. Like, I don't know. There's, huh. there's maybe something there. Um, but yeah, let us know if there's any cool cards you folks mm -hmm. have thought uh, have come out in, you know, any of these sets. So, the last time that we had this invitational, it was just after the Lord of the Rings set yes. came out. So, since then, we've had. Murders at Karlov Manor, Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Um, what else were we? Uh, we I had think, a bunch. yeah, we, we wrote these down for a reason. Somewhere? Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe um, one of the others. Uh, I'm trying to think. No. Nope. No? We did have it somewhere. We did have it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Anyhow. there's been a lot of cards that have come out. Um, and more to come in these new sets. Modern so, Horizons 3. Coming out. Oh. I think the players are almost ready here. Yeah, we're gonna go back to them here. To switch this to here. Oh yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, it's a mountain. mountain. Most important card in the deck for Cameron, as he learned. 
<laughs> oh, I didn't mean no. to make it. Oh, no. Like that, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, a little friendly ribbing. Yeah, every, uh, yeah we're going to go. Yeah. 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 Oh. They're good. Were, you, were they waiting for us? Uh, no. Oh, I told them they could Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, for this game here, other than Scape Shift and Seven Lands, what do we think Cameron needs? Yeah, because uh, well, last time they did three turns and kind of did nothing. So it was so. funny because Cameron, if we recall, he molds a four. Yeah, and he still like was in it, and he, he was still doing it. stuff, and he almost won. He, uh, uh, we won't talk about that. Yeah, maybe. yeah, 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 yeah. But um, you know, so obviously, uh, and I'm not sure what he kept or how many cards he kept. Mm, uh, so starting with more than four cards probably would be good. Yes, uh, but. For Matthew, this is the type of the type uh -huh. of interaction that I think you want to see in this matchup, right? Uh, uh, goodbye, Ren and Six. Uh, yeah, so we got Ren and Six. We got Seasons Pass, and we'll bring up these cards here. Seasons <laughs> Pass is an absolute banger of a card. I don't know what that other what that is. Is, is, is that you? is that the something? is that a funny printing of Eternal Witness? Maybe it's one of the Secret Layer printings, and I, it, oh, like in the mind's goodness. eye, I know yeah. what it looks like, but I don't know what card it is. It does look very obviously green, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I mean, unless Matthew has a way to interact with the Ren and Six, I assume you just go for the Ren and Six because yeah. they're playing it like Cameron's playing it next turn. Otherwise, yeah, and, and it's such a good card for yeah, and there escape the shift deck too, right? You know, let's bring that card up. This card. <laughs> also insane. I feel like it has, I mean, it's still very good, and I, I feel like it's maybe more of a niche card. Like, it doesn't fit into just every yes, deck yeah. kind of thing, right? It's more often found in, like, land-focused decks. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, even in kind of just a general good stuff deck, always drawing a fetch land every turn, as long as you had one earlier in the game, is yeah. always pretty good. And then it can ping things like Ragavan. Yeah, that's exactly what I was yeah. thinking. Ragavan, shoot him off if you need, right? And yeah. If you get to the emblem for if somehow you make it, oh, there, you right? win the game. At that yeah, point. yeah. It's just yeah. retrace on everything feels really good. So and specifically in Cameron's deck, if you start retracing time walk, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if he gets there, yeah, if he, that, if he gets that there. would be a story. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that would be happening. Can I make right a retrace uh, scape shift joke at this yeah, point? Yeah, I think you not, can't. I don't know. I don't know. I feel, I feel like we have to like Cameron's got to get this game here, and then I yeah. feel like we can go there. No, no. I, I have faith in Cameron, I'm, yeah. and I am just joking. Oh. And I will be the first to admit I have mm. made some boneheaded plays in my oh. lifetime. Like, absolutely. Like, on the board, it's like, you obviously. You should win the game. Or, or just like, don't do this because this will mess you up. And then I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. And it's like, oh wait, that was uh, that was a bad idea. I, I, bad idea. I had a, I went to a invitational for a, the face to face tour piece, and I was playing, uh, what was it? I think not Pioneer. Was it Pioneer? Pioneer. And I was playing okay. Red. Okay, Red deck wins, right? Never played the deck before. Took it there. I'm playing against the guy. I think we're both four and one right now. This is like to win and get, get, to get into top eight, top eight okay. right? I have Rampaging Ferocidon on the board. What does that card read? Uh, every time a creature enters play, that player loses a life, yeah. including yourself. But what does it also say? You can't gain life. Okay, so they were playing Cauldron Familiar. Okay. Right? Yeah. And, you know, doing things with Cauldron. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you take your damage. But the gain life part, I missed. Oh, but that's like on them too to remember that, right? Isn't so it? that's what it came to the judge rule, right? And so I'm like, Freak it out, basically. Like I'm nervous. I'm under the pressure. Yeah, yeah. We're the only ones that haven't finished. So and, and then you have the crowd around. The crowd around us, yeah, and yeah. I see people asking the judge a question. I'm like, what is going on? I'm missing something. But at the end of the game, like he just was able to overpower it, right? Mm. Even with lo the mm. losing of life, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. from the creature. Yeah. Um, really, he, he would have been losing to uh, a life every so, turn. So I was losing the life from the culture and from the right, right. But he was also losing he was life. also okay. losing life. Um, okay. And but the the gaining life part, right? Uh, I was missing. So I guess he mm. was like gaining that life too eventually. And so the the, the judge kind of talked to me at the end is because both players were unknowingly missing this piece, yeah, right? Yeah. It's not his job to come in and enforce this rule that both of us are missing. It was something along the that lines seems of that, very strange, which is like okay. very strange, right? And. Like, it kind of cost me the game, right, in the but, top eight, but... I mean, I, I, I'm not a judge, uh, yeah. so I'll start by saying that. Mm -hmm. um, but if, like, GRV-related stuff, generally, yeah. I think the judge would be pointing that out. So that seems like a GRV... Maybe because it's a trigger it. and it's not yeah. like a looking at extra cards thing. I don't know. Yeah. 
Uh, I do want to talk about Sir this Trek card. Yeah, a couple cards that are on the field now or that have come up recently. So Matthew played Search for Escanta. This, I don't, I feel has like fallen from grace a bit. Yeah, like this card I was, see it much. this this card was hot, oh, hot right. stuff. Blue white control when it was standard time. and stuff. Yeah. Like it was so awesome, and it, I think it's still really cool and and pretty good. It's a lot slower, obviously, than mm -hmm. I think the the format has gotten to a point where. Turn two, I'm just gonna play this enchantment that does nothing when it enters play and like gets value over time. Like, yeah. and then your opponent plays in an initiative creature and you're, you're like, like, what ah! am I doing? Um, <laughs> They're but coming in for 10. Again, this is the type of matchup where I think it can actually do a lot of work potentially. Mm -hmm. But that being said, Matthew tapped out and then Cameron was able to resolve a solve the equation. Uh, is what it looked like, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, here it is. And so this allowed him to uh, go into his deck and get time there's walk. that time walk again. Okay. So, you think he plays it, or do you think he's trying to set up for it again? Uh, well, this was uh, on his main phase, so mm -hmm. he has no mana left over to, to do anything. Next Maybe turn. next turn. Uh, I don't. Ramp? I don't think so. But and Cameron's. I I like the respectable play. He's playing with his cards still open, right? Yep. Known information is still known, right? Yep. And not uh, not keeping it hidden. I I tend to do the same thing for tournaments like this. But. Yeah. Until you play a brainstorm, and then oh and yeah, then then, the then it's then you pick up all the cards, and then you're like, ah, oh, you don't yeah, know what yeah, I you have don't know what I put back. Yeah. And I'm gonna play this fetch, so you don't know what went away. <laughs> That's always that's always the dream of yeah. things. So, and at this point, like the seasons pass, which I, I will say, I have like a that's, a that's weird a love time. of this card. Mm -hmm. Seasons past is a uh, a really cool one, and it like cycles itself into your deck to like yeah. do weird weird stuff. Um, so, if Cameron gets to a point where he has enough mana and like starts doing crazy stuff with this, this card's gonna be real good and, oh, and yeah. provide a lot of value. But I would say at this Six point, mana. if you did have a brainstorm. You Chuck tuck it. it. Yeah. This Chuck card it. is not doing you much right yeah. now. And Matthew's going to do all in his power to not let this resolve, yeah. too. So it's going to be... it. It's a long ways away still, right? You know, two yeah. turns and if it's, it is allowed to be played. Uh, so we'll kind of see. It seems like just more of this kind of slow, methodical play. We'll see what Matthew does with this search for his Kanta, right? Yeah. If he's going to be starting to put cards. He's going to have a bit more card selection, right, on the top. It's almost like a mini surveil on his upkeep that he's getting mm. to do, right? Keep the card on top or put it in his graveyard to yeah. try to build it so he can flip it. What is, is it seven cards? or Seven cards. I think it's seven cards, yes. right? And yeah. then it flips. Yep. Uh, we can bring it up. Uh, da -da -da -da. And the flip is, I believe it's what, tap three, three and tap, and then look at the top four. So it's For similar to Narset, right? Uh, and it's minus too. Yeah, it's it's basically the Narset, uh, the mono blue Narset ability mm -hmm. minus uh, on a land. And then I think this is also really cool, especially if and when he gets Wilderness Reclamation out, because then it's like Ooh. you play something on your main phase, or maybe you activate this, and then you untap all your lands, Ooh. and then on their end step, if they've done nothing, you didn't need to counter anything, kill anything, yeah. you activate this and potentially draw another card. Archimedes Tar Charm putting in the bin. That's a telltale. I have another counter spell that I don't want to fully tap out. I, That's me. It, but. it may also indicate that he just uh, doesn't have that third blue source. Oh, he doesn't. Because, it, yeah, that's a basic looks, swamp. I'm not sure what this I think uh, it's a shiny sanctuary. card is. It might be Mystical Sanctuary. But, I mean, yeah, he might have other card draw spells or counter spells. And so he figures, you know what, I'd rather get one step closer to this uh, this um, uh, search yeah. for his can to flipping. I'm going to share this uh, link with one of my groups here, I think. Yeah. Which... Uh, Hopefully it'll get us there. And uh, for those tuning in, you know, we got 17 viewers right now. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And hope you continue throughout the day of our tournament here. We're at Enter the Battlefield in Newmarket. Uh, Davis and Young, we also have a in store. In Canada. In Canada. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep... In Canada. Not North everyone America. here is necessarily from Canada. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, I... Uh, uh, oh, we cast our time walk. Oh. Okay. Did it... Resolve? It looks like I, it did. I think it did. Yeah. It looks like it did. So Cameron's going to take another turn after this. Wow, the, the viewers didn't like that message because one of them dropped wow. off right well, They were like, said it. And they don't like Canada? I, no, I was, I was going to say something about, like, you know, we're like Search for Escanta. You know, if we get to some number of viewers <laughs> concurrent, uh, you know, we're going to flip yeah. into. I don't, I don't know what. I, oh. I'm not sure where I'm going with that. Um, in any case, looks like we're crop rotationing uh, for what would he Cameron. Get with crop rot here. Uh, 
I gotta pull up this card. This card is so good, and I'm I'm so it. happy that it's not on the uh, points, points list anymore. Was it on the points list? Yes, it, it was. was. Right? For yeah. One? I think it was until maybe 2022. Uh, it's if I'm not somewhat mistaken. recent in the world. Yeah, recent-ish. Right? So. Uh, I don't know. Time time is a flat circle, right? <laughs> I could see Cameron maybe getting something like Field of the Dead, like that kind of a mm, card against that'd be Matthew. Good. Seems very good, even though he's not quite at seven lands yet. Yeah. Um, it's just, it represents a lot of potential frustration. But, uh, you know, Cameron actually kind of got God here, so his crop rotation got countered. And Ooh, as a result, the land. he just, it's, uh, it's a two for one in uh, Matthew's favor. And you know what? Maybe he There's had really lot. big plans for that crop rotation because then he... Followed up with the time walk turn and didn't do anything. Just draw go. Just draw go. And that that, that comes to that kind of piece where we were talking about last maybe, time. Maybe he needed that fifth land for something. Maybe. Yeah. Well, he needs seven for another thing. <laughs> as, we, oh, no. as we found. <laughs> oh, oh! Wait. What? He did not set that up either. That was just on top. So this is this is a, an interesting one. Temporal, uh, temporal mastery. Mastery. Oh. Yeah. So uh, Temporal Mastery is a, a miracle card, which means that if you draw it as the first card on your turn, you basically reveal it as you draw it, and then you can cast it for, in this case, a much lower cost. Uh, and effectively, that turns it into a time walk. So um, Cameron was able to spend two mana for an extra turn, and now it looks like he's in the extra turn, and uh -oh. we're e trying to Eternal Witness for... Some, oh, but we're oh. just dressed down. So That's good. Yeah. That could have led into Ewit picking up time walk, time walking, and then trying to set up. He still doesn't seem like he has I mean, too much after that, though. Right. But, you know, Dressdown's going to say no to that, stop it, and Matthew's going to get his turn. He's All counting. Right. Here's that search for Ascanta flipping into Ascanta, the sunken ruin. So um, I think in this case, honestly, Matthew is probably just keen on having Master. plus one mana. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Based on what we were talking about before, like in a lot of cases, these are. Uh, you know? <laughs> See you later. So Eric, our uh, our competitor that you saw in round one, is heading out the store. We appreciate him, mm -hmm. him joining us. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of like what we were talking about before in the in terms of the mana, you know, in the cases where you're kind of control and control crimes going on here, uh, having more mana than your opponents is going to be pretty helpful. And again, if you know Cameron doesn't do anything too threatening, then Matthew's just gonna be like, "Yeah, let me see if I can draw an extra card. Let me see if I can draw an extra card with this, uh, with the sunken ruin." So that's also gonna wow. come in handy, I imagine. Look at all these taken extra turn cards. Like the turn rug turns is really coming out now. We've seen three of them. Why? And, and this is a Thassa's. Uh, oh, this is a temporal. Uh, yeah, this is a time spell. warp. Time warp. Yeah. Time warp came out on Cameron's side. And Matthew is just counting, countering that, which very cleanly allows him to keep up the mana necessary to activate the the search yeah. or the uh, Ascant of the Sunken Ruin. So and just doing it for one too, because he has no extra mana. So well, one is pay two. Yeah, 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 yeah pay yeah, two. Right. So and he's got choices. Uh, looks like Force of Will, Pernicious Deed. Uh, Would you take here? You ha you have a E win on the board. Third or fourth cards. He's he's looking at. It, I mean, it's hard to say. Uh, we haven't seen all the cards in Matthew's hand as well, which mm -hmm. makes it tough to call. But, I mean, Force of Will That's seems like choice. it goes along with the game plan you're trying to do. And again, he actually has enough mana to hardcast it if he needs to. And, yeah, and if right. not, then you activate Search the next turn, right? Uh, and he has enough Keep life that he can probably take a few hits from this Eternal Witness and not be too too worried about it. Yeah. Do you think uh, Matthew at one time is going to pop this Wasteland here? Just trying to knock him down another. He's at five. That's kind of a nice threshold for all your take your extra turns, right? Like a couple of them are at five. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of them are in the graveyard now, right? Yeah. And Ewitt's on the board. Uh, it's regrowth. But. So, again, we, we talked about the, um, like, scape shift. The magic number is seven lands. Mm -hmm. So if I was Matthew and I was really worried about a scape shift potentially resolving and killing me, then maybe i do it when Cameron gets up to six lands. Yeah. So it keeps him off from getting to seven lands, like, the following turn immediately. Um, but he may not also be too worried based on the amount of counter spells he has yeah. in his hand. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. okay. Ooh. Putting in endurance and force oh, of will. Force on the okay. Endurance. So things are popping off right now. So uh, we had a Cameron attacking in for two, which again not super threatening, and, and maybe Matthew is. Uh, I'm not sure if he got a little hasty with the uh, with the endurance. Endurance. Where is the endurance? Here it is. Um, 
So he, he flashed it in with the intention of blocking, and then uh, Cameron's like, you know, I'm going to force a will your endurance, I guess, just to, to try to chunk you for two. So, I guess, yeah, the, the tides kind of turn a bit, and who's attacking and who's not. Oh, hello, Papa Mark. This is my friend here. Oh, nice. Yeah, but uh, I'm not, <laughs> wow, I'm not his friend. so annoying. I know. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, one of our nice. other players that sometimes will come by ATB. So, uh, yes. Yeah, oh, I think I know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marco, Marco yeah, Tall yeah, yeah. guy. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's also really annoying. Uh, I'm kidding. He's a great guy. Wow, he's a good guy. Mark, why don't you give us a follow Couple or Mark. something, guy? Yeah, yeah, give us a follow here. Oh, we're at the 21 viewers. Yeah. Yeah, let's we go. The, we broke the 20. We broke the 20. I don't know that guy, handsome. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy here, he thinks he's really good at Super Smash, though, oh. I have to say, right? So we, we try to go to some tournaments together, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want to carpool with someone that was, might not help me out in the Was tournament. Marco the annoying guy uh, in Rocket League you were telling me about? No. Oh, okay, okay. So that's someone else. Someone else. Okay, okay. Someone else. Anyway, back to the game. So yeah. uh, we, we saw a bit of an exchange, and actually Matthew was like, you know what, I'm going to force back uh, the force. I guess he really cares about the the endurance. So this is kind of interesting. He got Cameron to, to shuffle in his graveyard into his deck, which what? I guess does shut off things like a regrowth mm. type things. But then this also means that Cameron's got a bunch of time warps yeah. back into his deck. So I don't know if that's... I was actually thinking about that as he was resolving the endurance. Like, does he do that? or, or I what? personally... Like, yes, they go to all the bottom in any order, the idea oh, is it on the bottom? It's the bottom oh, but in then, any order. But then if he fetch. He fetches. Yeah. And the idea of being able to miracle again, right? And time walks back in there too, right? Right. So. Night Nightmare Newborn, uh, how many viewers until you guys flip? Like, what are we flipping? Are we flipping yeah. the table? Yeah, <laughs> is <right>. that? <laughs> Turn the camera um, everything. If we oh, get to 100 concurrent viewers. Yeah. We'll flip something. Please, but they have to be real people, not bots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah real yeah, people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would flip. Uh, backflip. Can you do a backflip? No. I'll, I'll Will you attempt. try to learn for the yeah. screen? <laughs> flip Sia. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like I that. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're flipping someone idea. else. Yeah, 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 we'll flip yeah. someone We'll else. do like one of those like uh, cheerleader ones where he like stands oh. on our hand and then we like throw yeah, yeah, yeah. him up. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. He'll, it, I mean, it's just ceiling, like the flame retardant ceiling tile. So like if he he'll gets through it, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. Anyways, like... He'd, you know, we, he might stifle his own ability to do it. So. <laughs> Dress down. <laughs> Dress down on yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, oh, we'll see. But we're, I, we're getting pretty aggressive with these jabs are, like, I, against yeah. poor Cameron here. Yeah, He's going to yeah. watch the VOD and be like, wow, these guys are a-holes. Really <laughs> yeah. What a, it seems like, what was he putting in his hand here? Uh, I don't know what that is. I am not it looks like a good card. A yeah. blue card, nonetheless. <gasps> it's Primordial Mist. Is it? Oh, it's the oh, card. Oh, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Wait, it's Matthews, Matthews. Oh, sorry. Is it Primordial uh, Mist? Yeah, I think it is. <gasps> it's the card. I think, I think it it's is. that card. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, did he play it? Or is it just in his hand? Oh, I think it's just in his hand. Yeah, it's in his hand. Oh, oh thank please you, play Papa it. Mark, for the, for the follow. Thank I have to you, say. thank so. you, thank you. And we're going to know we if you want to follow. It. Yeah. We will find we, you. We'll see you. We'll find you. Um, so we were talking about this card. Yes. I was asking about this card. Yes. Because I thought it was terrible. I think it's very good in a grindy, like either mid rangey or um, another like very controlling deck. Mm -hmm. The problem here is like we were talking about it earlier. If he taps down low, like taps five mana to play yeah. this like five drop, and then Cameron goes like counterspell or okay, yeah, resolves, mm -hmm. and then untap, and I have like scape shift with backup like counterspell backup mm -hmm. you're just in a world of hurt so like i would doubt that matthew plays it unfortunately because i yeah. do want to see it i do, do too stuff. i want to see some um, manifesting creatures but right? like i think it does start to add up like a 2-2 every turn gets pretty wild gets gets pretty you it's know, creeping the clock goes tarpet, pretty fast. right he has endurance i i personally you know i i might hold it right you know think that he, he has yeah. force of negation right Kind of flash that a bit yeah. because Matthew's definitely in the driving seat. He's been in the driving seat almost feels like since the beginning of this game, right? Yeah. Uh, and we'll go from there. Blue card in hand. The one off to the right and kind of the top right of the screen, I believe, is the primordial mist that yes. we have there. So the other blue cards in his hand, we are not sure. Yeah. We know that the Force of Will got played so that he could keep the endurance. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, honestly, for, for Matthew, 
even even if you drew Wilderness Reclamation, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, if I play this and it resolves, and I get to untap all my mana, but again, it's like, but what if they counter it? Yeah, exactly. And then you're left with, you know, very, very little. That looks like the um, uh, Tainted Pact. Tainted Pact? Yeah. Oh. So this is one of uh, the Putting points in Matthew's deck. So again, Canadian Highlander, points-based system. You can only run up to 10 points in your deck, and... Uh, and Tain oh. Pact costs uh -oh. one of those points. And so Tain this Pact is, has a funny interaction. Uh -oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is a bit of a funny interaction. Um, go walk me through this. Okay, so if I am Matthew right now, I'm going to poop, poop your I'm pants. gonna oh, oh, flip oh, the top of my deck. Okay. Oh no Matthew, sorry, if you're Cameron. Oh you're Cameron. Your pants. Cameron, if I'm Cameron now, I'm like, well, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm Matthew, uh, you are rubbing your hands together and saying, This game's over. He's gonna basically flip his entire deck. It's gone, and Thassa's Oracle enters, right? The ability then triggers, and what ends up happening is Matthew has no deck and he wins, wins the game. The game. Yeah. So it's very hard to interact with. This is a CDH staple, this Thassa's Oracle Demonic yeah. Consultation. Uh, or what's the other card other than Demonic Consultation? It is... Uh, Thought Lash. Thought Lash. There's also... Tain Impact. Tain Impact, that's what I'm Well, thinking. that's what this is. This is Tain Impact. I thought this was the other one. No, this is... No. No, no, that, that card that he played was Tainted Pact. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he also, he he also does play Demonic Consultation, okay. uh, but that was Tainted Pact. That was the, oh, okay. uh, the Reveal. Um, what's so the this same. set again? Mystical Archives? Yes, Mystical Archives, Archives from uh, whatever, the, Strixhaven. Um, so with that, Matthew takes it. Congrats, Matthew. Yeah. Honestly, uh, got there, you know, tough for Cameron in game one, mulling to seven, which is... Or sorry, mulling to four, which is tough, and then uh, not having the lucky number seven on his side for land count when he played scape shift. And then in the next game, Matthew seemed to have the right pieces at the right time, and Cameron played to his outs with his extra turns, but didn't wasn't able to get there fully. So we're going to pull up our bracket in just a moment and find out who will be playing. Matthew will be sitting... How did, how did uh, Frank do this before he did this? Uh, yeah, and then he did that. Yeah, there we go. We Perfect. Did it. Matthew will be sitting, waiting for his challenger. And next, we will have uh, Jeskai Green versus Four Color Fast Lands. This is not Inspiring Vantage and uh, Spire Bluff Canal. That, those are not the Fast Lands we're what talking mean? about. What do you mean? Those are Fast Lands. And they are Fast Lands, but uh, we're, we're talking about a Lands deck that is quote unquote fast. So. Are you saying these lands are like race cars and they will attack the opponent? Or are we talking about fast bond? I think I think it's that. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, think I think it's, it's that. fast bond. <laughs> uh, to be honest though, if we if we uh, we're gonna we're probably gonna cut for a break in a few seconds here, but I think it's worth bringing up the deck if we mm -hmm. ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, this this is what we're talking about. Um, and I think the fastest card in David Zek is Where's that ne need for speed? This card. Woo. Have this. you seen this card before? <laughs> yeah, I have seen it once. Wild card. <laughs> Sacrifice the land. Target creature gains haste until end of turn. Okay, and and you wouldn't think like in a lands deck it uh, is doing a whole lot, but this in combination with Titania, oh. you win the game on the spot. It, oh. It's and there's other stuff like going on there as well. But anyway, um, just to give you a bit of a, a sneak peek, I think. It um, you know, in a little bit here. How, mm -hmm. how did you think that that match played out? Like, do you think that that was the usual outcome for those two decks? I don't think so. I think Cameron maybe was in a bit of his head from game one there, I yeah. have to say, right? And that's it's, it's a tough loss in game one that he had. Yeah. And I get that, right? So I'm hoping that didn't get to him too much game two. Honestly, it felt like way more of an uphill battle game two than it did game one. Yeah. So it's, uh, I think in the regular kind of pieces of it, it's still maybe a little bit favored to Matthew there, yeah. right? If he's able to kind of survive this little piece, not react first. But it's, uh, it was pretty convincing, I have to say. Yeah, and in that, in that second game where it looked a lot harder for uh, Cameron, which is funny because he was on, I think, seven cards and not seven. four, yeah. like in the first game. Um, but, you know, we talked about drawing the right part of the deck. Mm -hmm. And I think in that case, Cameron, uh, or sorry, Matthew didn't draw the removal heavy half of the deck. He yep. seemed to draw a lot of the counter spells, uh, which interacted a lot more with what 
uh, Cameron was was trying to do. And I think the search for his kids actually paid off yeah. in that moment. I think that's like, you know, in those one of those times, it's like, this card can help me win the game. And I'd say that was almost the MVP of kind of that second yeah. game because it, it seemed to draw the counter spells that he needed to kind of just yep. like close the force the will to get that endurance and the yep. endurance kind of just chunked Clear. him. Yep. So I think that was good. So uh, I think the true MVP is Valakit and the text uh, in game one. Uh, but I think both players played really well. Unfortunately, about that one piece, but uh, we're into our next round. We will have Dave versus, what was it? Sia. Sia. Yeah. Uh, and this will be a fun game too. So we'll probably take a little bit of a break. Uh, a little grab your popcorn, grab your friends, grab your family, uh, grab some drinks, and we'll be back in just be a Be responsible moment. though. Be responsible. Be responsible. Um, Only water. I have a different MVP to call out. Okay, it's you. It's the it's the viewers. That's you right. you folks are the uh, the MVPs. We really appreciate you joining in. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see you very shortly. <laughs> are you talking about me? Or are you talking no, about? No, he's talking here? about here. Okay, he's talking okay, about me here. Okay. Marco here. Okay. You know, definitely definitely looking for me. So All right. uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Papa Mark, thank you very much for the encouragement of words. Uh, uh, don't come over later tonight. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm Adam. This is Will. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with the next round. Awesome. Thanks very much, everybody. We'll see you in a moment.